know that God is here with us. And hear these words from the prophet Isaiah. By the tender mercy of God, the dawn on high will come upon you to give light to you wherever you may feel darkness and to guide your feet in the ways of peace. May you worship God.
let us join in the call to worship. God is our light and our salvation. Whom shall we fear? God is our shelter and refuge in difficult times and our hope and joy on days of celebration. Day after day, we seek God's face and the assurance of God's holy love. God, do not turn from us or hide your face from us. Be our guide and our light, he said. One thing we ask of God, that we may live in God's dwelling place all the days of our life and never cease to behold the beauty of God's home. Beloved of God, enter this worship in thanksgiving for God is among and within us. Thanks be to God. And let us pray together. Gracious light bearer, into the shadows of our isolation, you speak words of life and community. Challenger of our lives, you call us from places we call home to lead us more deeply into the world you love. With your gentle healing touch, you redeem the broken places of our lives, and you heal the wounded places of the earth. Inspire our worship here this day, so that we may be filled to overflowing, to share your reconciling love throughout the earth. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our first hymn this morning, Glorious things of thee are spoken. You will find it on page 598 in your hymnal. We invite you to stand as you are needed. <laughs>
two wonderful scripture readings this morning. The first excerpts from Psalm 27. We have already heard bits in the call to worship and in the wonderful introit composed by Dennis. And it is about God's light and how God's light compensates for or overcomes all of our fears. Now we don't know the context in which the psalmist wrote this beautiful prayer, but the depth of the emotion suggests that he was in a fearful, struggling place, and out of his darkness, he experienced God's light lifting him to a new place of grace. So as you hear the words, I hope that you will let them come deeply into your souls. And our second reading is from the Gospel of Matthew. You will recognize these words, especially the center section. Now, I really want you to listen. Not read, follow along, but listen. And here's the reason. Most biblical texts, including this one, started out in the oral tradition. They were stories to be told and heard. They were performed in the context of worship. So, in a sense, this story that you are going to hear is a bit of theater. It's drama. There's action. There's movement. So listen to it. And in your mind, watch it unfold as the words are read. And so let us receive these words from Scripture now. The first Scripture reading is from Psalms 27, first verse 1, and then verses 4 through 9. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And verses 4 through 9. One thing I asked of the Lord, that will I seek after, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will set me high on a rock. Now my head is lifted up above my enemies all around me, and I will offer in his tent sacrifices and shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. Come, my heart says, seek his face. Your face, Lord, do I seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not cast me off. Do not forsake me, O God of my salvation. And the next scripture reading is Matthew 4, 12-23. Now when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and he made his home in Capernaum by the sea in the territory of Zebulon and Naphtali, so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulon, land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea, across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, and for those who sat in the region, in shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to proclaim, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets. And he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, 
and proclaim the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. So his fame spread throughout Syria, and they brought to him all the sick, those who were afflicted with various diseases and pains, demonics, epileptics, and paralytics, and he cured them. And great crowds followed him from Galilee, Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and from beyond the Jordan. And here ends the readings.
some fishermen. And fishermen have nets and they throw it into the sea and it gets filled with fish. Well, I don't fish, but I have a net. I have a net with an owl on it because I love owls, so I got my net with an owl. And I, do, I fish, but I don't fish for fish. I fish for books. And I keep Amazon in business because I fish for so many books. <laughs> so here's my net, and it's all filled with some of my favorite books. And I thought I'd bring them today. So, so you want me to open up a little read for them? Do you think that's a good idea? Okay. Well, actually, we're not going to do that today, probably gratefully so. So, um, but here it is. Um, who was um, the Ainsley? Thank you. 
thank you, gracious God, for the gift of being together as church, for the gift of hearing your words from Scripture together, and just for the gift of your presence with us, which fills us with peace and inspiration. And so, O oh God, now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, you who are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. <coughs> so I wanted to tell you a story this morning. And this is a true story. It's about a church in Ohio. It happened a few years ago. And it was actually reported on the BBC. And here's the headline. Lightning hits preacher after call to God. <laughs> a congregation in the United States was left stunned when lightning struck a church moments after a visiting preacher asked God for a sign. <laughs> the church members in the town of Forest, Ohio, said the preacher had been emphasizing the importance of penance when, in the course of his prayers, he called on the heavens above. The lightning struck the steeple. Then hit the preacher himself when it traveled through the electrical wiring through the microphone. <laughs> Local authorities, though, said he was not injured. It was awesome, just awesome, said one church member. You could hear the storm building outside. He just kept asking God what else he needed to say. He was asking for a sign, and he got one, so reported the church member. Afterward, services resumed. However, churchgoers realized after 20 minutes that the building was on fire. <laughs> was electrified. <laughs> now, why did I tell you this story? Honestly, for no good reason other than I think we need to laugh. <laughs> because it is hard out there. And we need laughter to help to renew us. And also because our reading today goes a bit deep. And so I thought a bit of joy can help us navigate this reading, perhaps with refreshed and open hearts. So let's go back to the reading that Sunday so wonderfully read for us this morning. Thank you so much, Sunday. And it's a story of Peter and Andrew and Jesus. Peter and Andrew are by the seashore, and they're casting their nets into the sea. Now, these are not kind of these modern-day nets that you see on fishing boats that are nylon. They're kind of light. But these are heavy and bulky material, and they're weighted down with stone so that when they're cast into the water, they'll go to the bottom, and the fish will come in. And I think you can imagine when these nets get wet, they get heavier and heavier. So Peter and Andrew were trying to throw these nets into the sea. This was a burdensome job. Peter and Andrew would be the equivalent today of just of, of, of laborers. They were not wealthy people. They were living in a feudal system 2,000 years ago. When they caught their fish, they weren't selling it at the harbor fish market for a profit. No, they were probably giving it back to the government. So they, these were two people who not just were heavy laden because those nets were heavy, but because their lives were really heavy. So Jesus comes by the seashore. He sees them. Now, we don't know if he had previously identified Andrew and Peter because he just came by and said, follow me. And the reading says, immediately, without hesitation, no questions asked, they dropped their nets and followed him. I find that pretty extraordinary. Have you ever made a decision that way? They didn't ask for Jesus' resume. 
They didn't sit down and analyze what it would mean to follow it and what are the pros and what are the cons. They didn't develop a strategic plan. They didn't debate different points of view. No, something just really bold came over them. And not only that, Jesus didn't ask to see their credentials. They said, now, now what, what is your CV? Where did you go to school? I want to make sure that you're well fit. Jesus didn't ask them any of that because they were just human beings created in the image of God as we all are. But something came over them. And what came over this then was this, that they were able in a flash, in an instant, to let go of the weight of those nets and be free to follow Jesus. Can you imagine if they had been carrying their nets with them? They wouldn't have made it very far. But they let them go. Every single one of us is carrying some kind of net, a weight on our shoulders in our lives. Maybe past regrets that we can't seem to manage or get through. Those regrets keep on creeping in <coughs> at moments even unexpected. Sometimes they're just past resentments that we're not able to get over. And again, they appear at times that we don't anticipate. Sometimes it's just the inability of ourselves to see ourselves in the same light that God sees us. And so we may consider ourselves unworthy, not suitable, not passing the test. But Jesus didn't offer a test. There was no test. It was just, follow me. And here's one of the big ones. The weight that we carry on our shoulders in our souls and our hearts, it can be fear. The fear that the psalmist spoke about in Psalm 27. Fear is a powerful emotion. It is both a gift, because if we didn't have fear, we might find ourselves in circumstances that would be harmful, but it also can be an enormous impediment to our living fully in the life and love of God. If we are weighted down, when Jesus calls and says, go become fishers of people, we don't have the freedom to do so with the love that we need. Because when Jesus gives that command, become fishers of people, do you know what he does? Well, there's one verse that was not read. It's the verse that immediately follows the reading that Sunday offered. After they went and followed Jesus, what Matthew says in his gospel is they went around healing. They became healers. And healing doesn't mean necessarily curing a disease, but when Jesus went around healing, he simply went to somebody and said, you are loved. Just as Deborah and Greg heard those words, Jesus loves you. And if we do not feel loved ourselves, if we, do, if we are feeling weighted down with the fears and resentments, regrets, and maybe <coughs> sense of unworthiness ourselves, we are not free to offer that to somebody else. So here's a story. A number of years ago, I was leaving church in New York after a long work day. I was on my way to the airport. I had to catch a flight to England. And needless to say, I was very focused on what I had to do. I was carrying luggage, a heavy bag filled with books, and I was dragging along the street and got my way to Broadway. I was going to hail a cab. Anyone here from New York, please? Images sound familiar. <laughs> yes. And I'm waiting. It's a Sunday afternoon, and there weren't a lot of cabs coming down Broadway. And I 
was getting edgy because I had to make it to the airport, and there was a gentleman sitting on the street, diagonally behind me. He said, ma'am, ma'am, could you spare a dollar? I paid no attention. I was focused, and I had my heavy bags. All I cared about was getting a taxi and getting to the airport. And he persisted, ma'am, ma'am, do you have a dollar? Would you spare a dollar? And I just paid no attention. So he persisted, and finally, in my exasperation, because I had things to do, and I had just come from church, I, actually, I just been working in church. I took a dollar out of my bag and just tossed it. And he said, ma'am, I don't want your dollar, ma'am. You couldn't even ask me my name. Who was the healer? It wasn't me. Here I was thinking, I want following Jesus, but the weight of my suitcase, the weight of my focus on having to get to the airport, denied me the ability to see a human face with a name and with a history, a person, a child of God. And he changed me. He lifted a weight from my shoulders because he told me, you know, it doesn't matter who you are in life. You have an identity that is blessed by God. There's another story. And it goes back a few centuries. Actually, to the 18th century, 17th century. There's a man by the name of John Newton. John Newton was English. He was a slave trader. After being conscripted into the military, he found himself on a boat that transporting, was transporting slaves, and he became a leader on that boat. That was his profession, to be a slave trader. And one night, the boat was at sea, and there was a violent storm. And he was terrified. And I can imagine him perhaps reciting those words from Psalm 27. Oh, Lord, you are my life and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? You are the strong hold of my life. Of what shall I be afraid? The boat was being tossed. And he was terrified. And I can only imagine what it was like for those who were in the lower bowels when that boat was being tossed by the storm. But something happened. And all we can think is that it was a miracle of God's grace. He said, you know, I can't do this anymore. I cannot transport slaves anymore. I believe in the goodness of God. And he had a conversion that night. And as he reflected on that <coughs> night, he wrote the words to the hymn, Amazing Grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that say in his words, a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. And from there, he got ordained. And he went on to write not just Amazing Grace, but the Amazing Grace of the hymn that Dennis suggested as our opening hymn today. Glorious things of thee are spoken also written by John Newton as an expression of a faith in which his profession of being a slave trader had been lifted from him, thrown off, and now he was free to be the person God created him to be, and that was to speak a word of love to all people regardless. And so, for our prayer time, we're going to sing Amazing Grace. Now, here's the thing. I love Amazing Grace. I argued with John Newton on one point, though, that it's important to debate in time. I don't like the word wretch. Because when I sing it, I know I've made a lot of mistakes. I think we all have. I don't like calling myself a wretch. I don't like calling you a wretch. So, I will leave it up to you, the word you want to use. You can use John Newton's word, or you can say, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a soul like me. That 
save the soul. I'd like us to remain seated. I'd like it to be a prayer. And I invite you to either think about John Newton in that boat, or think about what in your life do you need to shed? What weight do you need to throw on so that you are free enough to follow Jesus in the ways of God? Yes. 
joy to be here. Thank you so much, Debbie. It's wonderful to have you here. And yes, and celebrating that Judy is with us in the choir today. And of course, we pray for Bruce Turner. But let's center ourselves in prayer. O oh Lord, you are our light and our salvation. You are the stronghold of our lives. And we would pray that you would help us each day to be more clearly aware of your presence, both within our lives and within the world. Right now, oh God, we lift into your loving presence our world. We pray for our nation in this challenged and fraught time. We pray that you would embrace our nation with a spirit of love, a spirit of gentle understanding, a spirit of civility. We pray for the people of Puerto Rico who have encountered yet another earthquake. And we pray for Judith Blanchard and the whole team from the main conference who will be traveling there soon, bringing relief efforts. We pray for all those in China and throughout the world who are struggling with the coronavirus. We pray for peace on earth and peace for the earth. We pray for Bruce and all in his family who are grieving the loss of Sandy. We trust and believe that she has now been welcomed into your heavenly realm and is shining brightly in your love. We pray for Betty who has suffered a stroke be present to her, O oh God, and all in her family. We give thanks that Sandy is here today, and just we give thanks that we can be church together in your presence. We give thanks that Judy is here today, and we pray for Judy and Brewster. We also pray for Michael. Joyce, Athena, Jean, Chris, Happy and Jim, Jean, Leah, and Mary Eliza. And we pause for just a brief moment to lift to you the prayers of our hearts. In your mercy, blessed God, touch each one of us with your amazing grace. Restore each of us to become fully alive and to be fully loving, to become the people you intended us to be. And sustain us with your love, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
in gratitude for God's amazing grace and God's surprising grace. Let, it, let us give generously to our offering.
in the strength of God's amazing grace. May all that is burdening you this day, all that may be weighing you down in your life, may it gradually begin to be shed, that you may be strengthened and free to live in the spirit and love of God each day and always. And may the blessing of our God, the God who created you and called you beloved, the God who comes to us in Jesus and gives us new life, and the God who is the Holy Spirit and empowers us each day, be with you and give you peace and joy. Amen. Amen.